Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be integrating square root of tangent x. And I know many of you guys have been asking me this integral many times already. And originally, I was going to save this until I reach 100,000 subscribers. But I cannot wait anymore. So today, this is it, all right? Anyway, to integrate square root of tangent x, we are going to first do a u sub. So let me write this down right here first. Let me take u equal to the square root of tangent x, all right? And then, of course, you know the deal. We will take this integral from the x world to the u world. So let's go ahead and square both sides because this way it's easier to differentiate. And then we have u squared is equal to tangent x. And then we differentiate. You will get 2u du on the left-hand side. And this is equal to the derivative of tangent x, which is going to give us secant square x dx, right? However, you notice that the secant square x is not going to be invited in the u world. Therefore, we have to change it. And to do so, we can utilize this equation. This is tangent x equals to u squared, but we know tangent square x is equal to secant square x minus 1, right? So let's square both sides first. Let me write down tangent square x is going to be square this u square square, which is going to give us u to the fourth power. And this, as I told you guys earlier, it's the same as secant square x minus 1. And this is still the same as u to the fourth power. Of course, then we can just add one on both sides. So in other words, secant square x is equal to u to the fourth power plus 1. All right? And now, from here, I'm going to isolate the dx. So let's divide both sides by secant square x. So in other words, dx will be, this will be on the top. So let me write down 2u du over, this will be on the bottom. And you know secant square x, it's the same as u to the fourth power plus 1. So let me just put this down. And now we are ready to take this integral from the x world to the u world. So right here, this is going to be the integral square root of tangent x. It's the same as the u. And then we multiply this by dx, which is the same as that, right? And let me write it down as the following. 2u over u to the fourth power plus 1. And let me put the du on the side. And of course, we can do u times u right here, right? And usually, I'll put the 2 to the front of the integration sign. But no, let me not do that. Let me just write this down as the following. This is the same as saying integral. And we will have 2u square over on the bottom. We have u to the fourth power plus 1. And then, of course, this is a du. And now, we have a rational function inside. And usually, <laughs> we will just try to factor out the denominator and then do partial fraction, isn't it? But if you look at u to the fourth power plus 1, it is factorable, but don't factor it, all right? Because it's not going to be nice. And if there's a request, I will show you guys how to do the factoring for u to the fourth power plus 1, all right? But I'm not going to factor it. <laughs> anyway. The trouble, I think, is right here. We have u to the fourth power and then plus 1. The power is slightly too high. Is it possible for us to somehow reduce the power? Well, we do have a u to the second power on the top, right? Maybe we can utilize that. And if I want to seriously reduce the power of u to the fourth power, why don't we try to divide everything by u squared? How's that? So let me do that right here. Let me divide this by u square, and let me divide this by u square, and let me divide this by u square. All right? And now this integral is going to be the integral. On the top, I will just have a regular 2 over u to the fourth power over u square. It's just u square. That's good. And then we add. And then 1 over u square is just 1 over u square. Let me just write it down as this right here. And then we have the du right here. All right? And now, you may be wondering, <laughs> we have a complex fraction now. It seems like I make the question worse. But the good thing is that, yes, the power right here now is just u squared. And likewise, this right here is 1 over u squared. So that may be a good sign, all right? And this right here is the sum of two squares. Technically, we cannot factor it neither, right? The sum of two squares. But if you look at this right here, something squared plus something squared. That is kind of like something we can complete the square of, right? Hmm. I don't want to factor it. I don't do anything crazy. But let me just do some algebra with this, right? So let me put this down on the side. Let me just do it right here, right? So let's make some observation, right? So let me just put down observe. 
I want to observe this right here u squared plus 1 over u squared first of all I can tell you that this is the same u and then square plus something which inside is 1 over u and then square so you know you have the you know the typical algebra formula a square plus b square right it's not factorable but you know we can complete the square if you want to complete the square right here this is going to be in the form of the following first I want to have something square plus 2 the first thing times the second thing right and then at the end I want to have the second thing square like this the typical formula is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared right and you know now this is the a that's the b so that's filling the blank so let me just write down u right here and then u and then 1 over u and then this is 1 over u right but you know this is of course different than that because we have this extra term but it's okay because we can just go ahead and subtract this right here and pretend nothing happened isn't it so let's go ahead and add this and then subtract that which is 2 times u times 1 over u and if you look at this right here the first three terms this is just the perfect square now right so this is going to be u and then plus and then the second term which is 1 over u this is the perfect square that's nice u plus 1 over u and then square right and then right here what do we actually have look at this u and that u cancel out. so in other words it's just going to be minus 2 isn't it and now this can be replaced for the denominator right so we don't have to deal with the squares that kind of thing because if you look at this as a denominator this is the function part right so that's a strategy I will replace this to the bottom but check this out this is the function part wouldn't it be nice if I can produce its derivative on the top so that I can just do another substitution that will reduce the question dramatically isn't it well with that being said let's observe what the derivative of this is going to be all right so I'm going to use a green pen hopefully you guys don't mind so I will put down a star right here all right so check this out if I differentiate d du I know it's a green pen but for square root of x for the square for the integral of of square root of tangent x I have to all right d du of u plus 1 over u okay let's see derivative u is of course 1 and derivative 1 over u is minus 1 over u squared all right so be sure to do this carefully so here's the deal wouldn't it be nice once I replace this to the bottom here somehow I can have this on the top in that case that would be so much easier right okay on the top right here I have a 2 this is 1 and then minus 1 over u squared this is the extra function part but the 1 and the 2 they are the constant we can kind of somehow play around right hmm let me just write a few things down right here so I'll get back to the black and red let me do the following I still have the integral sign all right on the bottom here as I said I will replace this for the bottom so this is u plus 1 over u and then square and then minus 2 right this and that are exactly the same right algebraically right I showed you guys right here already and the deal is that on the top I really really want to have this right here so that I can just do the substitution again let me just write it down to make us feel better 1 minus 1 over u squared all right that's what I want to have right okay so now I'm just going to kind of see this right here I have the 1 originally I have a 2 I know 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so can I just add another 1 right here 1 plus 1 will give us 2 right <laughs> And then I subtracted 1 over u squared. Why don't I just go ahead and add 1 over u squared? And then you see this and that will be the same as just the 2 on the top. Isn't it? That's so wonderful. However, this right here, it's not the derivative of that. So I am not going to put down the same 
denominator. Once again, 1 plus 1 over u squared, this is not the same as the derivative of u plus 1 over u. So I'm not going to put down the same denominator, all right? However, you might be wondering, earlier, how come I chose to do something squared plus 2 something something and all that? Why couldn't I use the minus version right there? And the answer to that is, yes, I could. Why not? So another way to do it, just to show you guys, I also have a purple pen. This right here, all right, it's the same as following. All right, so what I will do is, I will place this right here into the denominator there, all right? So that's wonderful because this right here is the same as that as well, okay? And I will just put this down in black. So I can legitimately write down minus one over u and then square, but then it's a plus two after that, okay? So this right here hopefully explain all the algebra that we are doing right here, all right? And I will put down a du right here, of course, but now I have two things inside. Why don't I just split integral so we can focus on the first one and then the second one separately, right? So let me just put down du here and then another integral sign and then du right here is already there. Okay, what's next? I will show you guys real quick with the substitution again, all right? Uh, what color should I use? I will just use blue. Right here, technically I will have to do a u, uh, do a u sub, but I used u already, so I'll do a t sub, all right? So I'll let t equal to the inside, u plus one over u, and then you know the deal. dt will give, dt will give us one minus one over u squared du, right? And now you see this right here match the top. That's why I wanted to produce that, okay? And you know you can just go ahead and take this integral from the u world to the t world, right? So let me put that down. So on the top, if you pair things up right here, this is just dt, okay? So you can just write down dt if you would like, but I will put down the 1 and then the dt on the side, if you guys don't mind. And this right here is the t, right? The inside is the t, so we have the t and then square and then minus 2 after that, okay? All right, and for this one, I will also do a substitution. Let me use the w substitution, the w equal to this, which is, oh, right here it should be a u, right? That's just a little mistake, it should be a u, right? It should be a u. Okay, so w is equal to the inside, which is u minus 1 over u, and then dw is equal to 1, and the derivative of this is going to be plus 1 over u squared du, alright? So, with that being done, you know, we'll be adding the integral on the top here, that's dw, and let me put it down as 1 over and the dw on the side. And the inside here is w, and then we have that square, and then we add 2 to that, okay? So that's pretty much it. Now, continuation error, which looks like an integral as well. Anyway, what's the first one? Do we know how to integrate that? And do we know how to integrate the second one? Which one's easier? The second one's technically easier because it's more recognizable, right? Because if you have the integral 1 over uh, w squared plus something squared, you know the result of this is going to be inverse tangent of something, right? And the truth is that right here, when you have a subtraction, you can use the hyperbolic inverse tangent, <laughs> right? The inverse hyperbolic tangent. So with that being said, here's a formula to integrate the integral of 1 over x squared minus a squared dx. It's on the screen, right? I'm going to use that formula right here. Well, in this case, we have t as the variable, t squared, and then minus something squared. This is a 2, so what should I do? Well, 2 is the same as saying square root of 2, squared, right? So let me indicate that right here real quick. This is the same as square root of 2, squared, all right? Therefore, square root of 2 is the a. So apply that formula earlier. This is going to give us what? over square root of 2, okay? 
and then the inverse hyperbolic tangent. So that's the tangent inverse like that. And then the input is going to be, we have that t right here. So I put down t on the top over a. A is once again the square root of two. So I'll just write that down right here. Okay. We we'll close that. This is the quickest way to integrate that. Of course, you can do partial fraction of that, but once again, if you just request, I will do a video for you guys. This is just as legitimate as the LN solution. However, next one, when you have addition, that's the inverse tangent, the regular one, right? So once again, it's going to be on the screen right now. The integral of one over x squared plus a squared dx is equal to this right here, right? So with that being said, I will write it down for you guys. So we add the result of the second integral. Right here, once again, the 2 is the same as saying square root of 2 squared, and the square root of 2 will be the a. So this is the same as 1 over square root of 2. For the second integral, we have the regular inverse tangent. And we have the w for the variable. So we have w. And then this is over square root of 2. And this is what we have. Are we done? No, because here we are in the t world. Here we are in the, the w world. So be sure you substitute them back. So for the first one, let me just write this down right here and be patient, right? First one, we have over square root of 2 inverse hyperbolic tangent, or what inverse tangent, and then for the t, you know it's u plus 1 over u, so be careful on that, u plus 1 over u, and then over square root of 2. And then we add that with the second one, which is 1 over square root of 2, and this is the inverse tangent, the regular one, and we have the w, which is u minus 1 over u, right? So this is u minus 1 over u, and then over square root of 2, like this, okay? I know I haven't put on a plus C, but usually I do that all the way at the end because we are still not done yet. How come? <laughs> because the U is square root of tangent X. Be sure we go back to the X world, isn't it? So finally, finally, actually no, I'm just going to write down two more lines. Hopefully you have the space. So right here, I would put on 1 over square root of 2 inverse tangent, all right? I would just say it like that. Here we have the U, which is the same as square root of tangent x, all right? And then plus, well, actually, I'm just going to finish up right here. I'll just do two steps together right here, right? I will have to put down square root of tangent x into the denominator. And you know 1 over tangent x is the same as cotangent x. And when we have the square root, of course, you just keep that square root. In another word, 1 over u in the x world is just going to be square root of cotangent x, OK? Over square root of 2. Likewise, for the second one, we add it with 1 over square root of 2, and this is the inverse tangent. u is still square root of tangent x. So this is square root of tangent x. In this case, we subtract 1 over u, and you know the deal is the same as that. It is going to be square root of cotangent x all over square root of 2, all right? So, this right here is it. I'll put down plus C. Of course, you may have different form for the answer because they didn't use the inverse tension, all right? But anyway, this is definitely a legitimate answer, right? And hopefully, you guys like this video. Hopefully, you guys like the integral tangent x. If you do, let me know hit the like button and then maybe share the video and that would be so wonderful. Thank you guys so much.